Hey, it's Tim here. Now, the number one question I get asked on my other YouTube channel has nothing to do with analytics. Even though I've got a million views about videos on Tableau, no one asks that whenever they watch a video. The number one question they asked is, what annotation tool do I use for my videos? I use an app called Presentify. Let me show you their website. So if I just go to the browser here and I go to, uh, let's just type in Presentify app. Um, there's actually two applications called Presentify. One is actually about improving presentations and this one is the one you want. It's called Presentify Screen Annotation for the Mac. It's actually going to open up in the App Store here and you get to this page. I'm in dark mode so yours might look a little bit different but nonetheless this is what it looks like. Now you can see here I'm on the App Store page for this particular app. If I hit Control A it actually activates the tool and you can see there's a toolbar that comes up across the top. You can activate this without having this toolbar but for this purpose I'll, I'll use the toolbar. You get three color options you can customize these in the preferences. I'll show you this a little later on. And then you get a bunch of annotations option. You've got a line, an arrow, a rectangle, a circle, and some text. And they do exactly what you'd expect. If I choose the arrow here and I point to the name of the app, you can see that that works fine. If I go ahead and switch to a circle, I can, of course, highlight the rating here, and that works too. I can then go on and I can essentially keep layering things to sort of add context, use different colors to explain different things. and basically keep on adding context to this. So the idea is that you're meant to use this app um, in in sort of a live session. It works best if you use it in a live session. So the cool thing about this is you can also customize this in lots of different ways. Let me just clear those annotations and hit the shortcut again. Um, you can go ahead and customize all these colors here. So let's go out of this. And it actually lives in the toolbar. I keep it in the toolbar at the very top right hand side. I use another app called Bartender just to tidy up my toolbar. So I only have the screen recording tools and the Presentify app showing here. And when I click on that, you see you get the option to annotate the screen. This uh, brings back the pop-up that we saw before. If I hit uh, Escape and just go back and I annotate without controls, you see that you get the last tool that you used in your annotation up on the screen. So this is essentially going to allow you to type text on the screen. So this is a pretty handy thing to know. Um, the other thing you can, of course, do is uh, just use your highlight cursor. You can just enable that and it will just follow your cursor with a red icon. And I don't tend to use this because typically I actually use CleanShot X to highlight when I click. And people are pretty good at following the mouse. They don't necessarily need this red cursor all the time unless you're in a busy screen, in which case this sort of cursor is useful to have. But you can, of course, just go back and that also has a shortcut you can just disable it and it pretty much disappears so i'll just keep on using the clean shot highlights that you can see on screen now if i go to the preferences you get a bunch of customizations that you can use so one of the ones i don't use is to start the app at login because i don't actually like this running in some instances i sometimes use sidecar and when i fire off this app it can actually kick this um, uh, sidecar connection completely out of the computer so i'm using sidecar i open this to annotate something and the sidecar connection fell so uh, i've stopped sort of having this available at login but if you present a lot this is obviously a good option to bear in mind because it's going to make it easy for you to just get into your flow and just have it on a zoom call ready to go it's the kind of utility that you just leave running all the time now one of the other things you can do is you can change things so the favorite colors you can change these you can change the line width so you know what color do you want the whiteboard to be erase annotations automatically so you can set a timer so the annotations appear and disappear once you've done them so this is good let's just set this to let's say two seconds and if i go ahead and i annotate something what this will do is it will disappear after two seconds wait for it to disappear and it just goes and that's useful in the event that you're doing maybe a zoom session and you're recording you don't want things to stay on the screen you want them to disappear as you do stuff you can highlight different things at different points of your talk and as you move on they disappear and essentially it's a really nice thing so just having that option there is really nice for the people who kind of do that day to day uh, you can change the size of the cursor the highlight color all of this is fully customizable along with some keyboard shortcuts as well i always recommend getting to know shortcuts in an application because they kind of make working with this a lot easier they make working with tools like this much much easier and much nicer lastly on the about page you've got the information with the developer's name and obviously the website. If you head to the website, let's see if we can get this up. Um, this developer is sort of weird because they have uh, a bunch of different apps they've developed. This is obviously their one uh, app, but if I go to the Presentify app here, uh, you can see that it's actually got quite a nice sort of uh, store page. And this is actually the page I would use. If I just look for it, let's look for it. Um, let's look for the um, actual app website. Here we go. 
There's a subdomain of the main site, and this actually does a pretty good job of explaining what it does. Now, the best way to get this up, I don't believe is actually through the App Store. The developer might hate me saying this, maybe they don't mind at all, but the app is worth $4.49. It's a one-time purchase, and you purchase it in-app, so you can download the app, try it, and then purchase it. It's $4.49 as a single-time transaction. Now, I use lots of apps. You can see here that I use something called Bartender. I use Keyboard Maestro. I use so many different things. And not all of those are part of this uh, service I'm about to tell you about. And that service is called Setup. Now, Setup is available here. You can see it's actually advertised on the app page. Setup is essentially a subscription. It's one price per month, and it gives you access to a bunch of different apps. And I actually have lots of different things installed on my machine using this service. So my screen recorder, CleanShot X, is part of Setup. I use Better Touch Tool. That's also part of Setup. I use Presentify, which is part of Setup. In fact, if I go to my toolbar, I, a lot of the things I run, AdGuard, that's also part of Setup. I use a time logging tool here, Time Tracker. That's part of Setup. I have an app that quits things. That's part of setup. Um, I have this URL shortener. That's part of setup. So you kind of get the idea here. It's one monthly price, but you get so much value out of it that in, in, in my view, it's actually cheaper than buying all of these things individually over the period of time that you typically use this thing. And uh, additionally, you don't get sort of stung with um, additional sort of um, app purchases that are added onto these apps occasionally because you're essentially paying a subscription. So you're actually funding these developers in a more continuous way than just paying a one-time transaction. So I think it's the best way to actually get this app. But if you don't want to sort of subscribe to Setup, you can go ahead and look at Setup on their website. Let's go to Setup here and uh, let's uh, let's just search Setup and we'll go to the homepage and you can see they have a link of you know, different things that they, they have, all the apps that are available. So you can actually review what apps you'd use. I use Clean My Mac as well. It's just so many apps. You just forget how many of these apps are available. I stack many. I use that as well. There's just so many things here that I think is super useful. So I think that's the best way to actually get this and use it and um, sort of be happy with paying the price it, you know that comes with this. But nonetheless, um, you know, get it however you want. I don't have any sort of referral links. Um, I do have a referral link for setup in the description. So check that out if you want to help out the channel a little bit more. But that's it. That's that's all there really is to this app it's super simple now there is one final thing i'd love to show you and that is if you actually use a sidecar and you get everything working in a really sort of you know smooth setup you can actually use your ipad to annotate instead of using your mouse and cursor and this is useful maybe in a presentation setting and the setup is sort of uh, complicated but i'll essentially just talk you through it and also show you some b-roll on screen at any moment now essentially what you need to do is you need to connect your ipad to your mac and make sure you do it using a cable i also find that this is more reliable if you connect directly to the mac so in my particular case i'm using a thunderbolt 3 cable from my ipad pro to the macbook uh, pro that i have here it's an m1 max macbook pro that i recently got and essentially that's plugged directly into each other there's sort of there's, there's no wi-fi connection being used by sidecar this is just a pure wired connection once that's set up kick open sidecar and then make the iPad your main screen. The reason you want to do this is because you want to be able to mirror what's going on. And so if you want to use the full extent of the iPad, then essentially the screen you're sharing needs to be the same proportions as your iPad. However, if you want to share your main screen, like your, in this particular case, I'm using a 16 by nine screen, then in that case, make that your main screen and have the iPad mirror it. Once these things are mirroring, what essentially happens is that the screen that is being mirrored on your iPad also gets the iPad's touch controls. Now, I have found a bug, which is if you have the sidebars enabled and the touch bar enabled on the iPad, then you actually get this sort of mismatch between where the pencil thinks it should be and where it actually is. But if you disable those, you move those off to the side and just have a full screen for the mirroring, then essentially this works really, really well. And you can just use your iPad to directly annotate on screen. And that's just some super cool stuff. Um, it's nice to know that it's there. I've sometimes used this in the past for just annotating things quickly. But you can kind of have a setup. If you're going to be on a really long call and you want some flexibility in how you annotate things on screen, just set your iPad mirrored up, uh, wire it all in so everything's on power, nothing's going to cut out 
and you just pretty much get to go. So that's one of the best ways to use this app. I use this every single day pretty much to record videos on my other channel and, and it's just an absolute life send. It's actually the single reason I record on a Mac. I record on a Mac for two reasons. Firstly, CleanShot X and Presentify. There's these two apps keep me recording on a Mac. I could record on a Windows machine. Most people in analytics use a Windows machine. It's the most accessible business operating system that's available. Um, but nonetheless, I record on a Mac because these two tools make my life so much easier. So that's pretty much it. There's not much more to say than that. Um, I use Presentify. If I've sent you to this video because you've asked this question on my other channel, then I think this is a much better way of showing you this. Um, be sure to subscribe to this channel as well if you found this video useful. I'll tend to do all these explainers of how I do things and how I record things on this channel as well. And of course, I'm trying to reinvigorate this channel as well to talk more about the things I, I love in technology and the wider sphere. So if you're interested in more of that, subscribe to this channel. Otherwise, your viewership is more than enough. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.